Well, hello again. Um, hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining me again. This video is just to kind of give an update and to acknowledge my two year anniversary of having my lung surgery. On March 20th in 2017, I almost died. I had blood clots in my lungs uh, from previous pulmonary embolisms, PEs. I had two of those uh, several years back and apparently even with blood thinners, some of the clots in my lungs did not completely dissolve. What that did was basically cut off oxygen transport and blood circulation to certain parts of my lungs. So in 2017, December 2017, I wasn't feeling very well. I was short-winded after walking, you know, five feet, 10 feet at the very most, and had to stop to rest. I had checkups, had physicals. Uh, they thought initially it was asthma. They thought it was a uh, bronchial or bronchitis. And then my doctor, uh, thank God for her. My doctor said that it just didn't seem right. So she had me go and see a heart specialist. Um, wonderful doctor. Uh, he noticed that I had fluid around my heart. Peri pericarditis is what I believe it's called. Um, but it's just fluid around the heart and was causing my heart to work overtime, which is why I was partially getting winded. Well, I thought that was it, but as they did further EKGs and scans, they realized that my lungs weren't fully being utilized, that I was having blood clots, and that's also another reason why I was getting winded easily. So they sent me to another specialist who recommended that I have what's called a CTEF, which is going into the lungs and removing the clots from my lungs. Well, after several prayers, um, I decided to go to see a specialist who was known for this. The one thing about it is that we're located in San Diego. I'm here in Dallas. They said that we could also go to uh, UT Southwestern here in Dallas as well, but as far as the gold standard, the people who had been specializing in this procedure, removing the clots from the lungs, were located in San Diego. They had, you know, thousands and thousands of um, patients that have worked on over the years and in fact I had to be put on a waiting list. So Pete and I immediately started doing the process with my doctor, my heart specialist, to get on this waiting list to be seen, to even just be examined to see um, about getting these clots removed from my lungs. Well, after a couple months of going through the process of being put on the wait list, I was told that it'd be a couple months before I could even go out for evaluation. During that time, just a couple weeks later after being put on the list, I took a turn for the worst and really started deteriorating. My lung capacity was getting worse. My energy levels were getting worse. Um, it got pretty, pretty scary there for a while. So my doctor, my heart specialist, um, told me to go and admit myself into the emergency room and that he would put me on the list for the emergency room to, to be, you know, given a room right away. I went there. They thought that they could relieve some of the pressure by doing the pericarditis procedure by removing the fluid from around my lungs just to give my heart a break because it was just enlarged. You could see my heart beat, beating through my chest. But because I had been on blood thinners, they took me off of that so they could do the procedure here in Plano, but my blood wasn't getting thick enough to be safe enough to have a surgical procedure. So we waited and we waited. Um, and after going back and forth with a specialist in San Diego, they told me that they would see me right away and have tests done when I got there. So basically as I was waiting for my blood to thin, because I thought I was gonna, be, I was gonna have the pericarditis surgery here in Dallas, in Plano, uh, I still continued to get worse. Uh, with the help <laughs> and the persistence of my wonderful doctor, he recommended that I be care flighted out to San Diego as soon as possible, that I was just, you know, starting to deteriorate too quickly. So 
Um, we went back and forth with the administration and the doctors there. Um, we were dealing with insurance issues, uh, trying to get things taken care of. So it was actually in the in the uh, hospital, I played in the hospital for about a week. And then finally I got my papers and my approval to go through and get care flighted. Um, fortunately, P was able to go with me. Um, they packed me up in a Learjet and a stretcher. It was Pete, myself, two air nurses, care flight nurses, and the pilot and the co-pilot. And we all just kind of, you know, crammed into this small little Learjet. And I was care flighted out, which was a Thursday, March 16th. I arrived in San Diego late evening on the 16th. It was about a two hour care flight from Plano to San Diego. And when I got there, they had they set me up, changed my clothes, got me set, checked into my room. And when I saw my doctors the, that morning, according to the test that they had received from my doctors here in Plano, they said that they normally do tests to see what my condition is, and then they would schedule my surgery after you know doing some follow-up tests. But apparently, I was not doing very well. And I could tell that when my doctor came in um, that evening on the 17th, the night after I'd been care flighted into San Diego. And the look that he gave me, um, he had a very good bedside manner, but I've learned, unfortunately, um, over the years with my health issues, I've learned to read doctors very well. And though they may be saying one thing, I could tell there was something else going on in his head. And I could tell he was very, very surprised and very, very concerned about my health situation. I could tell that I was not, uh, I was not in a good place. So they told me basically after, you know, reviewing some of my tests from Plano and talking with me personally, they decided that they were going to forego any of the follow-up tests and put me into surgery immediately. So on uh, Monday, <coughs> Monday the 20th, uh, 5.30 a.m., they prepped me for surgery. I was told later on that they had to move other sur Arthur surgeries they had booked for that time. And you have to understand, this hospital is the gold standard for heart and lung transplants, for heart and lung surgeries. Um, I found out later on that t when I was, you know, recovering, that they were booked every day with surgeries from the time I was there, which was in March, March 20th is when I had my surgery, all the way through, through to June of that year. They have been booked solid for surgeries. 5.30 on the 20th, they prepped me for surgery. I met some people um, in the operating room who were just amazing. Um, unfortunately, I only met, remember Dr., I think there was a Dr. Brown who was actually assisting I believe Dr. Pretorius with a surgery. Um, I wish I could remember all the names but I was kind of stressed out, kind of intense, things were going pretty fast. Um, but basically my procedure lasted for 10 hours. They spent 10 hours, they cracked open my chest, <laughs> uh, which still just blows my mind. P waited in the waiting room of the surgery area all day long and According to him, Dr. Pretorius was very, very good at keeping Pete updated. I do have pictures of the surgery in a little more detail. I'll put a link in the description down below to the blog where I posted the information in more details about the surgery and how it happened. But obviously after two years, I'm still very emotional about it. I'm just amazed that I went through that. It just doesn't seem real. And I don't think I could have done it without my faith in God and without such a wonderful husband who stood by my side and guarded me and protected me and basically was my knight in shining armor the whole time I was there. So I went through the surgery. They put me into intensive care. Um, from the time that I was laying on the operating table, joking around with one of the uh, nurses, Ezra, I think he was the anesthesiologist, but I was joking around with Ezra and I remember his name because it's a biblical name, but I was joking around with Ezra 
and I remember them taking my glasses and then that's the last thing I really remember. And then I remember being in ICU, choking, and trying to pull tubes out from my throat. And apparently, according to Pete, they had to restrain me and put me in handcuffs, which I know is very hard for him to watch. After the incident of remembering waking up, choking, trying to pull the tubes from my throat and being restrained, the next thing I remember was waking up still in ICU um, and just being very, very sore and amazed, but feeling good. I felt good. I could breathe. Even at that point, the difference of my lung capacity from the time I went into surgery to the time I woke up from surgery completely, I felt it was night and day. So I was supposed to be in the hospital for two weeks just to heal and to rehabilitate and then they're going to put me into a, a half a halfway house to you know continue my, re my rehabilitation but apparently I was healing faster than they expected I was doing very very well and first and foremost I thank God for that and then I thank Pete but I also thank the staff at UC San Diego they were amazing. I could tell these nurses and doctors and uh, physical therapists were people who actually cared about what they did and took their job seriously and wanted to give the best to the patients they were dealing with. Okay, so from the day I had my surgery on March 20th until the day I was discharged and flew home with Pete uh, on March 4th, I have to say that I was grateful for every moment, for every nurse, for every physical therapist, for every doctor, for every surgeon, for the chaplain, even for the other patients that I met. I was very, very thankful because even though it was a very scary, life-threatening situation that I was in, a very dangerous, uh, life-threatening condition and surgery, I had peace and I know first and foremost that peace came from my father in heaven. That I don't take for granted but he put me in a place with people that made the experience that much less scary for me. Um, I was laughing thanks to my husband Pete, <laughs> I mean I was laughing which I know Laughter is a good medicine and I know that helped me a lot. They're even surprised how hard and how often we laughed. Um, and though I was in pain for a while, they were surprised that the pain subsided quite quickly. Um, so the time that I was supposed to have in the hospital and then in rehabilitation in their halfway houses, uh, they were very, very surprised. The time that I was supposed to be in the hospital was cut short. Um, I didn't have a need to go into their halfway house, so I was able to fly out on March on April 4th. Uh, we flew out with some oxygen, had some issues on the plane, PB my protector, there was some things going on in the airport, making sure that they weren't mishandling me, uh, making sure I was constantly having my oxygen when I needed it. But as awful as it could have been, I have to honestly say that it was an experience that changed me forever. It made me realize that I have more strength to go through things that I didn't realize I would have strength to handle. I am thankful that I have a man that took such good care of me to this day. I just don't know how he found the strength. Well, I do know I have found the strength through God, but we all have our choices on what we can handle, and he handled it very well. He made sure I ate what I was supposed to eat. He made sure the nurses didn't, you know, neglect me. He made sure that I wasn't having relapses when, you know, I just, he kept such a great eye on me and took such a care of me that I'm just, I'm just so grateful 
and know what true love really is because to go through all that and to live out of a backpack in a hospital um, for that time I just I don't know anybody else who would have done that I don't want to make this too long but I just wanted to acknowledge this day because as I said it's it was life-changing for me I still bear the scars um, from it um, but that's my testimony and I'm proud of my husband it could have been a lot worse it could have been a lot worse and it could have been that I'm not here today giving this testimony but I say all of this to say that there are things that we think we can't handle we are put into situations that could end our life literally I know first and foremost with faith with belief with obedience and trust nothing is impossible with our father in heaven nothing is impossible and I'm gonna end that here because I need some tissue <laughs> and I just can't do this anymore um, I just don't think I need to say more than I'm thankful to be here after two years I just want to th just thank you for sharing this time with me um, in acknowledging and celebrating really celebrating two years of a traumatic event that has improved my life that I was able to overcome um, and just thankful for the people in my life and the people that God put into my life at that time because timing and people it was it couldn't have been any better but thank you very much for joining me I hope you enjoyed this I hope, hope it's not too long for you but if you ever are facing such a dilemma such a life-changing life-threatening event like this um, look to the hills that's all I can say is look to the hills um, and if you have any questions if you may be going through something like this as well I have been uh, signed up as an ambassador for UC San Diego for people in the Dallas Fort Worth area who may have to have this type of surgery uh, just to kind of give my testimony just to kind of give information as to what to expect what I went through and just any kind of support that someone may need so if you're happy to be in the Dallas Fort Worth area um, and want to reach out to me just feel free to drop me an email um, all my information contact information is in the description down below and if you have any questions I'm here to help thanks so much have a great week and I'll see you next time